Sheldrake 5? I think I saw the rest of this collection somewhere. Yeah, I think it was somewhere around here. Let's go take a look. Okay. Sheldrake. Have you heard of him? Sheldrake, I mean. 
Yeah, Lotus told me about him. There's a British biochemist named Sheldrake. He has a rather interesting theory. Morphogenetic fields, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Really? From Lotus, huh? Well, Clover also said something to me about that stuff. She did? Yeah, um, what was it? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. <sighs> that girl. I told her not to tell anyone. You did? Why? Well... Look, man, I didn't push it because we're in a hurry, but I'm kind of sick of this. How about you just tell me, okay? Tell you what? Don't give me that. About the experiment. Ugh. Very well, fine. I'll tell you everything. But not here. Let's move to the top floor. I suppose I might as well start by telling you why I kept quiet, and why I made sure Clover did as well. To be honest, the explanation is quite simple. Zero told me not to. I had little choice. He didn't walk up and tell me, of course. He gave me a message engraved on a card. That's a Braille card. It looks just like the one you showed us earlier. So you had two cards? No, only one. Huh? What do you mean? I thought that card just had some rules for the nonary game on it. Yes, it did. And those were the rules I read you. However, they were not the only thing on the card. There was something I didn't read. Well, perhaps I should say there was something I couldn't read. And that was? Tell no one of the events that took place nine years ago. Tell, and I activate your sister's detonator. It's a threat on our lives. Oh. Well, um... Well, what about Clover? Did she get a message from Zero, too? I don't believe she did. But doesn't it strike you as strange that Zero would shut my mouth, but not hers? Yeah. To be on the safe side, however, I told her it was best not to tell anyone. Still, apparently she told you. That girl. What's wrong with her telling me? I figured some stuff out with the things she told me. Hmm. I mean, it looks like the whole activate her detonator thing was just a bluff. She's prancing around downstairs happy as a clam now that you're back. That's very true. I've decided I can trust you. I've decided to tell you the truth. The chance that Santa is zero is very high. I feel I can assume Santa doesn't have the time to observe us at the moment. And at any rate, even if he were, I very much doubt he would kill us. Why? Clover told me about the four-leaf clover, about the words. If he knew about that, then he was in my group during the first experiment. I'm sure of it. He wouldn't kill us. No matter what the situation was. <sighs> hey, uh, Snake? Yes, I know. You want to know what happened during the experiment? Yeah. How much do you know? Clover told me about... I see. The morphogenetic field in the experiments nine years prior. How the experiments had taken place simultaneously at two locations, one being the ship and the other being a building in Nevada. And the girl that died during the experiment. She told you all that, did she? Hmm. At any rate, I now know how much you've learned. All that remains for us to determine is who did this and why, right? Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Yes. The people who organized the initial experiment were from a company called Cradle Pharmaceuticals. There were four of them running the show. Gentaro Hongo, Nagisa Nijisaki, Teruaki Kubota, Kagechika Musashido. Hongo was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Nijisaki was his right-hand man and did the lion's share of the planning. Kubota led the company's research and development division. Musashido was their majority stockholder. It was these four people who planned the initial experiment. Hmm, let me simplify it for you. Hongo designed it, and Nijisaki put it all together. Kubota developed the technology required, and Musashido provided the cash. Huh, so it's Hongo, Nijisaki, 
Kubota, Musashido. Of course, more than four people were required to conduct an experiment of this scale. To that end, they organized a top-secret team to assist them with their research. All in all, they gathered ten people or so. Those ten completed their team, and they were able to begin the project. They named it the Nonary Project. The purpose of the experiment was to research the prospect of controlling a human mind through sheer will. The uh, vessel, I suppose you could say, for this control was the morphogenetic field. Huh. Why did the glycerin suddenly begin to crystallize? Why did the crystal structure of EDT undergo a sudden change? Why did the rats improve their puzzle-solving skills with each generation? Experiments with humans produce the same results. The more people who knew the answer to a question, the more there were who could answer correctly without having seen the problem before. Why is that? How could it happen? Hmm. The answer is that the shape of the answer has been stored in a field invisible to the naked eye. And through that field, the resonant event transmits information related to that answer. That's essentially the idea behind morphogenetic fields. But that's just a theory. Can't bring yourself to believe it? Yeah. Let's say someone killed another person because the devil told them to do it. Whether the devil exists or not has no relevance to the murder. They believe the devil exists. Whether or not he does is immaterial. So what matters here is that Hongo believed in the morphogenetic field. That's right. But I still don't get it. You said they wanted to figure out how to control people, right? That is what you were saying. Yes. So how are they going to do that with a morphogenetic field? I'll keep it simple. Let's suppose 10,000 people have solved a certain problem. The chance of you knowing that answer, even if no one has told you, will go up. Let's have another example, shall we? Say one million people were to do a handstand right now. Tomorrow, the chances of you doing a handstand would be higher, even if you had heard nothing of this hypothetical mass handstanding. Mankind's thought process and actions are all part of a resonant event. All of the resonant events encoded in the fields are projected onto you. Of course, this assumes you believe in this theory. Do you follow so far? Yeah. Now, if there was a person who had the same effect as those millions of people, what would happen? If that one person were to do a handstand, other people would find themselves wanting to do handstands as well. Can you imagine what a person with powers like that would be able to do? Come on, there's no way. I'm not done. Imagine another scenario. Imagine another person. This is an ordinary person. Let's say he does a handstand. What if there was someone who could grab the resonant event he created by doing that and use it to make other people do handstands? What would happen then? Mm. A person who has the power to write to the field and someone who can read from the same. You could think of them as the writer and the reader or the transmitter and the receiver. What would the world be like if there were people with abilities like these? So the transmitter's resonant event can be transmitted through the field and sent to the receiver. And then the transmitter can control the receiver however they wish. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. Close enough, at least. Come on, that's just crazy. Well, if you want to prove that, then you'll have to test it first. At least, that was how they thought. That was why they decided to do their experiment. That was how the Nonary Project began. By the way, Junpei, have you ever heard of the Gansfeld experiment? Yeah, that was an experiment in telepathy, right? You place a pair of subjects in separate rooms. Then you show one a picture and ask the other what they see. Interesting. I'm impressed. Yes, that is exactly correct. So, why did you bring up the Gansfeld experiment? It was used to screen subjects for the Nonary Project. The hospital in a remote town was affiliated with Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Hongo used it to conduct experiments on visiting children in secret. Some of them, he found, had potential. He began to gather children that showed promise. Children that seemed as though they might be able to access the field. Of course, none of them volunteered. They were kidnapped. There were nine pairs of siblings taken, for eighteen children total. 
For reasons that were not fully understood at the time, each pair had one transmitter and one receiver. They were split perfectly. As such, the 18 children were split into two groups of nine. The children who were put into Group Q were the ones who excelled at transmitting. They were transferred to the mock experiment building known as Building Q in the Nevada desert. The children who excelled at receiving were put in Group A. Group A was then placed on the former hospital ship Gigantic. From the experiments he had conducted so far, Hongo had learned the following. There are two things that can increase one's resonance with the fields. The first is epiphany. The other is danger. Have you ever been faced with an especially difficult problem and thought about it very long and very hard until finally an answer suddenly appeared in your mind? It may seem obvious to say so, but that is what is meant by epiphany. The information obtained through that epiphany can be easily transmitted through the fields, where it can be easily interpreted. Adding danger to that equation allows for even easier field access. That's where Hongo came in. They set up a number of puzzles across the gigantic. The participants had to solve each one before they could move to the next room. Of course, he hadn't forgotten to include danger. He had detonated a bomb on the hull of the Gigantic. The children in Group A were forced to play the nonary game as the ship sunk. By forcing the children into a life-or-death situation, Hongo hoped to increase the likelihood of their tapping into the fields. The children from Group Q, on the other hand, were confined to the mock experiment building, Building Q. Building Q duplicated the interior and puzzles of the gigantic exactly. Every detail was exactly the same. Hongo explained the situation to the children in Group Q. Solve the puzzles you find throughout the rooms. When you have the answers, transmit that information to the children in Group A. If you succeed, they will be able to solve the puzzles and escape. But if you fail, then the gigantic will sink and your brothers and sisters will drown. Those were his orders. Do you know why the astronauts of Apollo 13 were able to return to Earth safely? It was because NASA had access to a replica of the Apollo 13 capsule. All of the equipment, the instruments, everything, all of it identical. Everything was just like the real Apollo 13. NASA was able to replicate the situation the astronauts found themselves in. By putting themselves in the same situation, they attempted to solve the problems the astronauts were dealing with. Once they found solutions, they reported their findings to the men aboard the actual capsule. That was how they were able to return safely. It was the same with the gigantic and building Q. The children from Group Q had to use the power of Epiphany to solve the puzzles they found and transmit what they learned through the fields. The children in Group A, however, they had to access the fields to learn how they might advance to the next stage. That is the simplest explanation I can manage. Huh. Hey, Junpei, Snake! How much longer are you two going to sit around on those bony asses? Get down here already! He's right. Let's go, shall we? We don't have much time. We need to get out of here and soon. Hold it. There's one more thing I want to ask you. Hmm? Are you sure that there were 18 kids? Why? 
Well, I thought it was only 16. Oh, yes. That was what they said on the news, wasn't it? Yes. I have no doubt that 18 children were abducted and used in Hongo's experiment. After all, you couldn't exactly play a nonary game with any less, could you? Well, yeah, but are you saying that the news got it wrong? Yes, I am. There were two more children. However, they had no relatives that I'm aware of. I imagine no one filed a police report when they went missing. They were brother and sister, like Clover and I. The brother's name was Aoi. The sister's name was... Her name was... <laughs> her name was Akane. That was the girl who... died. <laughs> Akane Kurashiki died? Nine years ago? Then... Who is Chun? No. No, 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 no. That, that's impossible. It can't be true. Akane isn't that uncommon of a name. If Snake had known her last name, that's a different matter entirely. So they share a name. A lot of other people do, too. It doesn't mean anything. It was someone else. Of course it was. It has to be. <laughs> is something wrong, Junpei? Your breathing sounds strange. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's nothing. I'm fine. Let's get back down there, all right? <sighs> I couldn't do it. Why didn't I ask? What's her last name? I just couldn't get the words to come out. Thank <laughs> you. 